Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple application like Linktree using Ruby on Rails. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the terminal. Alright, then from here I'm going to create my new Rails application using the Rails new command. And I'm just going to call this Linktree Rails. And I'm going to specify the database as PostgreSQL because that's the database that I use. And also, I'm going to use Tailwind as the CSS framework. But these two options are optional. Uh, and then I'm going to press enter and this is going to generate our new Rails app. Alright, now that the app has been created, we can cd into the directory. And we can start the server using bin slash dev. And now that the server started, we can go and view our app on localhost port 3000. And we'll see that uh, there's no database, so we just have to create the database real quick. But then we see the Rails logo and everything this means that everything is set up and we're ready to start developing. You see I'm on Rails 7 and Ruby 3.3. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is probably going to add user accounts. Because the user has to sign up before they can, you know, create their profile with the links. So to do that, let's add the device gem. I'm going to add bundle add device. And I'm also going to add my personal gem, which is tailwind underscore device. Just to make the device sign in and sign up pages prettier but this is optional. So I'm gonna add device, it's gonna add the gem, and then from here, we can run Rails G device colon install, which is a command to run, and it'll add all the things that we need for device into our app, and then it'll give us some steps to do next. It says ensure you have flash messages, just so that if there's anything that went wrong with signing in, you'll be able to see it. And also when you successfully sign in, it'll give you a message. So we can go ahead and add that into our app. Let's open up VS Code, and I'll go ahead and open our code. Damn, I really should organize this by date. Well, that makes it easier. Okay, so now that we're inside of the code, I'm just going to go into the app folder, the views, and the layouts folder in the application. And we can just put the alerts here, but I'm going to put them in a partial or render layouts slash alerts and then I'll create a new partial in the layouts folder called underscore alerts .html.erb, where I'll put this piece of code and that's just to kind of like hide this away I guess although we're, we still have the code here all right so then now that we have the alerts uh, we still are on the same screen actually and I think the server stopped uh, but the next step is to generate the views now you don't have to do this this is only if you want to customize them but instead of this, I'm going to use my gem, which would be Rails G Tailwind Device colon views, which will add all of the custom styled views for Tailwinds. And then you can customize this too. And the last thing you have to do for device is generate the user model. So we do that by typing Rails G Device User. Oops, there's a typo Rails G Device User. And this will create the user model. Then we can just migrate the database. And we can go ahead and start the server again with bin slash dev. Now we reload. We still see the rail screen because we haven't set the root. So let's quickly set a root. Although we don't have any controllers yet. So hmm. let's just go ahead and scaffold a new model. So I'll do, I'll call it a link. And then the link will have maybe like a name, a URL. And it's also going to belong to a user, who the user belongs to. And I'll run this, and then I'll do a Rails to migrate. And I'll go ahead and start the server again. And now we go back. Oh, we still don't see anything because we need to quickly set the root. So we'll set it to our new links index. So we'll go into the routes.rb, so the config folder, routes.rb. Inside of here, I'll go down and I'll just uncomment this root. And I'll change this to where we want it to go to, which is the links index page. Now we reload, we'll see that we end up on the link page and we can click new link. And now we're here, we can add the name and the URL. Now one thing is the user. Uh, we don't want this to display on the, user, on, the, on the page, we just want to get it set by the current user. So we can do that by going into the app folder, the views, uh, go into the links, Go into the form and then we'll just delete that user ID field completely. 
And then from there, we just have to go into the controllers in the Lynx controller and change up some of this code in here. So first of all, like out of the for action, authenticate user. So before anybody can go and create a new link or view any view any of the links page, you have to sign in. Which that's not usually how it is for for link tree, but we're gonna get to that part, like displaying the actual links in a second. But first, let's just uh, worry about the user signing up to create a new link uh, page. So they would sign up here. They can maybe put their email. Sign up. Now that they're signed up, they can create the link. And then what we're going to also do in the links controller is on this create action. So on line 24, where we're creating new link, instead of just saying link.new, let's say current user.links.new. And this will add the association. But I want to quickly check the models to make sure that the link is has the proper association. So in the link model, we have belongs to user. But the user model also needs to have that association, which doesn't get added. So we need to go to the user model and add as many links, which will set up the association between the two models. And then we go and reload. Uh, we can just create our new link. So like YouTube link, and then this would go to maybe like my YouTube channel. And then we can create link. And then this is what it looks like right now. We just have like the YouTube link, the URL. So now we need a page to display a user's links. So there's a few different ways that we could handle this. So we could either go in the URL and have like flash the user like this. And then when you go here, it'll show all the links. Or we could do a subdomain. We have something like this dot the name of the website. And then it would also show you the links right here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a route that will match any any URL that has a parameter like this, and then I'll try to find a username, like a matching user for this name, which right now the users don't have names, so we're going to have to add that in a second. But first, let's add this little route. So to do that, I'm going to add a get slash user ID and let's go to and we're probably gonna do we can either make a new uh, controller or we can just do it off the links controller we can just say like links user links I know this isn't the best way to do it but just for a simple app this should work so then we can go to the controllers links controller and basically like at the bottom we'll make a method called user links now, the reason why this isn't a good way, at least for me, is because I like to keep Rails controllers using the CRUD methodology just because it's like easier. If there's an index, a get, then there's a new, there's an edit, there's a create, update, destroy. Other things like this, I would probably put them in its own controller. But for right now, I'm just going to do this. So user links, what we're going to do is we're going to try to say like user equals user dot find by username. Something like this, params user ID, right? Although I guess, let's go back to the routes. Maybe instead of user ID, let's just call it like their username. And then in the links controller, we're just gonna try to find a user by the username. Let's say like if user, then or how about just if not user, whoops. So if not user, we're gonna redirect. Actually, let's do a, a one-liner. So we're gonna redirect to root path. We're gonna add an alert. Said so like, sorry, no user found. If not user, okay. Uh, so what happened when we did? <laughs> when I try to do that, it actually oh because remember in the links controller we have a before action authenticate user. So we need to turn that off for our user links method. You can say accept user links. And then if we refresh with our well, with our thing, now it just is going to give us error. Basically because the user username does not exist. Okay, because device by default, it only has an email, password, 
and that's like that's really all the th things that they're taking from the user <coughs> so to add something like a username we have to add that to the user model but that's pretty easy we can just do a rails g migration add username to users and then do a space and just say username and by default it'll be a string and then if we take a look at what that generated uh, you see that it's just doing a migration to add a column to the user table of the name username and it's a type string and then we just want to migrate the database and now we have a username on the user now to allow the user to set that username well first when they're creating an account let's let's why don't let's add the username option here so let's go to that form the views so open up the device folder and then it'll be on the registration new now right up here at the top there's an email fields i'm basically going to do similar i don't even know if i need the class field but i'm just going to do the similar thing or you can just copy and then replace so i'm just going to write this out so we're going to do f.label username be like this is a lot of code to write by hand. And then instead of an email field, it's f.tech. Alright, now that plane has flown over my house very annoyingly. Do username. I don't even know why do we need autocomplete username. Maybe that's a thing with uh, Google actually, to get like the autocomplete thing. Which <laughs> I don't think there's an autocomplete for username. <laughs> Maybe. I'm just going to take this class. See, so it's kind of like annoying to copy all of the code, but I'm just adding the username field. All right, so you email username. So first, like I think email is pretty important, and then username. Well, usually the username's first, but it really doesn't matter, right? We're gonna need a use a email and a username. Although there's a few other things we need to do to tie this in correctly. So first of all, in the user model, let's add some validations for the username. So we'll say validates. How about we just say validates? username and then we can add some options we'll say presence true we'll also say uniqueness true all right so we should be good to go there but there's also some code we need to add in to get that username to be saved in devise because right now it won't save if we try to submit the or if we try to create a new user account it actually won't save the username because we have the username field on the on the view like in the form right here we have a username field but device doesn't know that it's supposed to save that because the user like because you want to be careful with this stuff because the user could a user could really go and inspect here copy this you know make their whole own field and put some crazy stuff in so that's why you always permit only like the allowed parameters that you're expecting okay i found the code that we need to add so we need to go over to the application controller and then add in this code right here. So it's a before action uh, that's going to run this method only if the device controller. And what's going to do is it's going to permit some new keys. And then right inside of here, we're, all we're going to do is permit the username. Perfect. So now I could sign up my new account. Like this is my username. Sign up. Wait, we get this page. Sorry, no user found. Huh? Maybe that's. I don't even know why did we see that. All right, well, let's try to go to this page now. Oh. I see. So right now. I think it's actually like. this hopefully not trying to go to the user links well, it's kind of funny because our routes uh, wait, that's not that's not the right one so if I go back to the routes RB see we're doing like this get username to links user links so it's kind of questionable if you know, if maybe I might have broken, let's say, links. Because this could possibly be a username too, but I don't know. 
All right, so look, I try to go to Indigo, and it says, sorry, no user found. Uh, what is my username? Let's quickly display the username to the to the user. So if we go to index, if we go to the links index. We're just gonna quickly display their username at the top. Current user dot username signed in as current user dot username. We reload it says signed in as hey man so i should be able to go to slash hey man yes so i can i can go to slash hey man and then it says oh it's missing a template which means we actually need to add a view like a corresponding view into the links folder and oh it's not an underscore it's actually just would be the same name as the method which we call the user links dot html dot erb and then here is actually where we display those links publicly. All right, so how about at the very top, we just put the user's name. So let's say at user.username. Put this in some big text. See what that looks like. So we have, hey man. <laughs> so see, I got to his link tree. And then now, now let's just actually style the link tree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a div around this. I'm gonna do flex, flex call which is gonna stack them vertically, one on top of the other. And then I think justified center should push them in the middle. But let's check that real quick. Let's check if the text goes to the center. No, okay, I meant item center then. Oh, oh maybe we need width full. I can't really tell if it's affecting it. To BG blue. Let's just try to add a like a color background so you can kind of see. All right, I think it might be item center, and we also need the width full. All right, perfect. So yeah, now you see it's going to the center, and then right underneath the username, we could just literally print out. You'd go and loop through the links. So you say at user dot links dot each new link. And then we could just add our styling for a link. So I want to do it similar to how Linktree does it. So I think for Linktree, it'd be like <clears throat> kind of a small link. So this is going to be just the styling. So the div is just the styling. And then inside of it, we would put the link.name. Let's see what that looks like. So I don't think we actually created any links yet. Although, no, we did. We have a YouTube link. I don't know why it's not showing up. At user.links.h2. Doing a div. Hmm. Oh, I wonder if this isn't my link. Because I think on the links page, we go to the links controller. These links are just all the links. But if we do current user dot links stall, we should see like we don't have any links. So that was actually someone else's link. So let's go and create a new link. I'm gonna call it YouTube link. And then sure, I guess I already had my YouTube channel saved. So if I create that link, now I do have the links. And then if I go to slash Heyman, it will put my name and it'll also show the link here. Now that's not really the style that I was going for. So let's go back to the user links and let's keep styling. So I think I'll do like a gray background and light text. Texts also have to be pretty big, honestly. All right, but the text should be centered. Text center and let's also add some padding to the box. So yeah, kind of like that kind of already looks like link tree. And then now we just need to push it from the top and also add space between. Because look, if we add a new link, let's say this is my Twitter. I think I do have Twitter, actually. This is my Twitter account. I don't really use it, though. Create the link. And then we go back to here. See, all of our stuff is just pushed together. So I want to add some spacing. So actually, I could just go to the, the top in the 
the top div and I could add some gap. Say gap eight. And now it's already pushing these items a bit apart. And then I could also add some margin on this text up here to kind of push them down more. And then now this is looking a bit better. So we have the name and then we also have the different links. But right now there's no like option to click really. So we need to quickly add that. To do that, we're just gonna go and we're gonna wrap this whole div for the link and the link to. And then actually we're, it's gonna be link to link dot URL. And then add do. So we can make this a block and wrap all of the inner content. And then now let's see what that looks like. All right, so already there's a kind of a big difference, like the styling got messed up a little bit. So I think mm, we could change, we could add this width maybe to the link. Although I know links don't do very well at styling. Like they really do terrible at styling. Oh, but hey, it actually worked. And then let's say hover. So right now it's BG Gray 500, but we'll say hover. It's gonna get a little bit lighter. So we can know it's a hover state or we can even make it brighter. We could turn it to a whole different color, like maybe indigo, indigo tech tutorials. See, so that already, this is already basically a simple link tree. You click on it and it goes to the link and it redirects to you. And then in production, if your site was called like mylinks.com or something, this would be the URL that someone would share. It would be like their slash their username. And now they're able to share it, put it all over the internet. We have a working Linktree clone. And from here, there's so many ideas that you could do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more content coming soon.